This video was going to be about me making this, uh, a radius sanding block for my guitar work. But as a byproduct of making that, I've come up with this, which is effectively a, a remarkably efficient planer, with, which gives some amazing results. So I guess the title of this video is How to Turn Your Spindle Sander into a Planer. profile the front here just so that the uh, the drum is just starting to peek out. Um, <laughs> I've made the, the front a bit high uh, and uh, rather than just take 10 millimeters off all round or, or maybe just at the front here um, <laughs> I've I've mounted the uh, the drum a little bit high on the spindle which is uh, perhaps not the way to do it but I'll see if I get away with it. 
Um, I can always start shaping this by hand, but uh, let's see how I get on. I need dust extraction, very important. This is clearly not the most efficient way of doing this, even though it's uh, it's kind of a fun way of doing it and a very accurate way of doing it. I'm going to I'm going to hand saw um, the sides away first, I think, and then and then profile it with the drum. Change of saw needed. I need a rip saw. At this point, this video is going to be about the radius sanding block, so we'll just quickly zip through that and then we'll come back to testing this as an actual planer. Um, if this was a an actual bladed planer with this uh, a rotating drum of knives, <laughs> scary thought, um, with with it going this way, and this being the infeed table and this being the outfeed table, um, I think I'm right in saying that almost universally the infeed table's height is adjustable, and the outfeed table's height matches the heights of the blades, and then by adjusting the, the height of the infeed table you can determine how much material is cut away. And that could be a significant amount because this is a sharp rotating set of blades and it can take significant amount of work away. And so the, the work will be considerably thinner when it comes out and hence you need a difference in the, the height of the infeed and outfeed so that the work is in contact with both the infeed and the outfeed at the same time and is held steady as it goes through. There are two caveats though when it comes to that sort of thinking with this. This is a piece of sandpaper and it's not like it's a set of rotating blades. This works far more subtly and just wears the work away as it goes through. And if this was set so that this was a, a few millimetres proud of the infeed table, the danger is unless you go very very slowly you're going to feed the work too quickly and it's going to pivot over the drum anyway and you're going to get uneven work. Um, this is only going to work if you take small amounts off with each pass and in fact the way I've got it set up at the moment it's it's barely peeping above the surface and I'm hoping this is going to give us the results that we want. But this setup is very similar to what we have here. We have a blade that is just barely peeking up above the table, I should put that that way really, because what we have here is an infeed and an outfeed that are the same height. 
So if this works, then why shouldn't this work for the same reason? So I'm going to give that a go and see whether we can use this for squaring workup and uh, see what results we can get. For those of you shouting, but why not just use your plane? <laughs> this is my test piece. It's anything but square. It's very uneven and it's end grain oak. And I would not like to be planing this with a hand plane at any rate. Uh, let's see how we get on. It might take a while to square this off, uh, given it's taking very little, but um, well, let's try it. Let's just pause for a minute to look at this. That was very few passes and I've got work that is very flat and from the look of it very square. Uh, so this looks incredibly promising. This is this is working far better than I, uh, I anticipated. Um, let's keep going. That is quite a remarkable finish. Um, it is dead flat. There are no, no ripples in the surface. It is beautifully smooth. You can feel how regular the surface is. And it is perfectly square. And I challenge you to get that sort of finish with hand plane. Um, your plane would have to be exceptionally sharp and I reckon you'd have to sharpen it a couple of times doing that. Plus, no tear out at the ends at all. Um, cross grain oak, don't forget. Um, I haven't done this little end here, but then I'd probably cut that off anyway. That is, I, <laughs> despite my scepticism to begin with, I think I'd be happy to use that for jointing. That is a remarkably even, flat, square surface. I'm um, frankly astonished and rather happy. For any of you wanting to build this, the important dimensions um, are that the gap here is 20 millimetres. This is a, a three inch drum, I think it is, it's 76 millimetres. Um, the, the height at the front, it may depend on your spindle sander, this should be 100 millimetres. I've actually got it 115, hence the sleeve being a little bit higher than it, it needs to be. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be up here, it should be down low. Um, but uh, I th apart from that, just build the uh, the thing to suit the uh, the size of your particular spindle sander. I've got this uh, 30 centimeters wide and 20 centimeters deep. It's a little deeper than it needs to be. 
Um, but uh, yeah, <laughs> simple. One more thing to mention is the remarkable lack of dust. Um, the dust extraction on this Triton spindle sander is really good, although of course it does help to have a powerful dust extractor plugged into it. Well that's it. Uh, don't forget to do all the usual things like like, share, subscribe, comment. Um, <laughs> I'm blown away by this. I really wasn't expecting to give such good results. There's not a ripple in the surface of this oak. It is so smooth. And, and it's oak. I mean, this is the toughest test you could possibly give this. And it's passed it with flying colours. I'm, I'm, I'm blown away. I've now got two tools for the price of one. I, I will definitely be using this again. Um, squaring timber, <laughs> amazing. Uh, yeah, so um, with that, I will see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye.